<laughs> Thanks, Angela. If you've just tuned in, we're seconds away from announcing the first winner of the reverse lottery. We're outside his house now, and he has no idea we're here. Well, we're on the ground again. Why? Another fuel pump problem. A Rotax mandatory service bulletin. Replacement of electrical fuel pumps. And guess who won the reverse Rotax lottery this time? <laughs> me. I have a serial number in the affected range. So I'm going to walk you through what's involved in getting these fuel pumps out. I've already gone ahead with a screw gun and I removed all of those screws that you see there. This is the only time you want to use a screw gun. Uh, once we get in the tail cone here, there's going to be fuel gushing out everywhere. You don't want any sparks back there. So uh, once you're done with the screw gun here, just put it away. Well, now it's time to make like a pretzel and see if I can squeeze back here. It's not too bad. I'm going to hang half of myself through the hatch here. Um, the other half of me is going to just be laying across the fuel tank. We need some basic tools here. First is going to be a flathead screwdriver to pop off a couple of, of these electrical connectors to the fuel pumps. We're going to need two wrenches to get these fuel fittings off and a flathead screwdriver also to remove these two hose clamps. So we're going to go ahead and pop these electrical connectors off. It would be helpful to note which connector goes to which pump. But of course, I don't bother doing that. I'll pay the price later on. A couple towels here to absorb any fuel that's going to be leaking out of these tubes. We're going to use two wrenches here. We don't want to put any sort of torque on the fuel pump assembly itself. Easy peasy. Well, that's not too bad. I spoke too soon. These are just the heavy duty microfiber towels from Home Depot. Alright, that one looks okay. I think we're going to go ahead and do the other connector here. Now, don't forget that it is possible to remove the entire fuel pump assembly here, which includes the pumps, the filter, everything. And you can do that by removing the four AN525 screws on the opposite side of this bulkhead here. 
and this entire assembly comes out as one module. Again here it might be tempting to use a screw gun to undo these hose clamps, but with these fuel fumes lingering in the tail cone here, there's no sense in risking that. Once you've completely undone these hose clamps, you can just pull them out. You'll bend them a little bit, but you can always bend them back into the, the right shape afterwards when it's time to reinstall these. The key here as is uh, the key and every time you go into the tail cone is to make sure you go in having the right tools. Last thing you want to do is get in and realize you don't have a screwdriver. And that's it. Now we have to be careful to cover these tubes so that debris or insects or anything else doesn't get into those tubes. Uh, ideally, if you have a plastic bag and a rubber band, uh, that should be the best option. I don't have that, so I'm going to just wrap both of these tubes in this clean microfiber cloth here. Oh, and one last thing before you mail this to Lockwood. Just give it a good shake. Um, there's not only fuel in those pipes, but also in the pump itself, both of them. Um, you don't have to go crazy, but just try and get out as much as you can. The last thing you want is for fuel to be leaking out at the post office. So just to wrap things up here, I wanted to call some attention to the history of these, these fuel pumps. On the left here, you see a Rotax alert service bulletin from March of 2019. And you can see here the affected serial number range was just for one year of pumps uh, in 2018. I got my pump, I think, in, I think I received it in 2019, and mine was within that range. So that one applied to me. Uh, so initially they were repairing the pumps and sending them back to you. Later on, they revised it and they said, you know what, we're going to just replace the pumps completely and send you a new assembly. Um, I think they sent me a new assembly, a new, new, new pumps, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't really remember. It's been a couple of years. However, the new bulletin on the right, which came out in April of 2022, that covers the exact same serial number range that they had issued two or three years ago. And they've also include, included more serial numbers, those manufactured in 2019 and 2020. And again, I'm assuming the first two digits of the serial numbers are the manufacturer year. So if we go to Van's uh, aircraft website, we'll see if we look for the fuel pumps, uh, we will see that they issued their service bulletin October 22nd of 2019. Um, so from March to October, unless you were following up really closely with these Rotax service bulletins, you may have missed it. And likewise with this newest Vans uh, Rotax service bulletin, I'm expecting Vans will take three, four, five months to issue their corresponding service bulletin for this. So if you're in the process of building or maybe your annual is coming up, or maybe you have a week of bad weather on the horizon, you might want to get this taken care of quickly. Uh, Lockwood Aviation told me that um, they would just take a couple of days to repair it and send it back to me. And most of the, the, the waiting time is just the shipping back and forth. I don't think they sit on the pumps very long. So that's going to be it for this edition. I know I haven't seen you guys in three or four months now. Uh, flying weather here in Jersey, in New Jersey has just been horrible this winter. Um, windy, cold, um, not a lot of sunlight up here in Jersey. 
So one day I'll move down to Florida and uh, be with the rest of you guys, probably. <laughs> probably all you guys are down south enjoying it. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure you go below and tappy tap on that subscribe button there. Do not smash it, you will break your phone. So until next time, take care. Mm.